So how many of you know about Presto? A little bit? OK, not too many. All right. Um, that's great. So I'll just focus on giving a quick overview of Presto and its capabilities. And then we'll discuss how uh, we can deploy it with on OpenShift and in Query Redshift, uh, <laughs> uh, Ceph, um, and other great things. So first of all, uh, I like to talk about Presto uh, as a SQL on anything engine. Um, so it's an obviously open source project. Uh, it was first started about seven years ago at uh, Facebook and then spread uh, here in the Valley and beyond very, very quickly. Um, and um, myself and my team were involved in this project for almost five years by now. So what's unique about Presto is a compute-only uh, distributed SQL engine, um, which means you can deploy it almost anywhere and it can, it, you can actually allow uh, Presto to access data from many, many different data sources. Uh, some, of them, uh, some of those are object storage like, uh, like Ceph or you know, Amazon S3 or Google Cloud Storage um, uh, or Azure Blob Storage, ADLS, uh, and other uh, technologies like this. Uh, you can also query HDFS and Hadoop, uh, obviously known for storing big data. Uh, but you can also connect to a variety of different uh, databases like Oracle, Teradata, SQL Server, uh, Postgres, and so on and so on. And also NoSQL engines um, like Mongo, um, Cassandra, and, and most recently uh, Elasticsearch as well. Uh, so it's a very, very powerful mechanism where you separate compute and storage, and, and you can do provide scalable uh, processing um, uh, using multiple ma machines in your uh, Presto cluster. And then from the user perspective, this is very familiar because you're sitting in front of your favorite BI tool or SQL editor. Uh, you can run things like Superset or Redash or Jupyter Notebook. Um, so it's very, very powerful known interface through JDBC and ODBC drivers. Now, uh, you know, Presto community of users is actually very, very large. This is a, a small sample uh, of that. Uh, but you can see some of the biggest companies in the world um, and from actually all over the world. Um, uh, many different industries, very, very uh, horizontally applicable project. And it's proven at scale uh, by, uh, and for a variety of different use cases by all those different companies. So you can, uh, if you decide to apply it, you can sleep well. You know those guys are pushing this to the limit already. Now, so why people like Presto? Why so many um, companies are deciding to use, leverage Presto uh, rather than alternatives? I think it's m several different reasons, and some of them uh, are summarized on this slide. First of all, it's a community-driven open source project um, used by a number of big players who, who bet their um, uh, SQL analytic needs um, on Presto. Um, so guys like Airbnb, Netflix, Lyft, um, uh, Airbnb, and, and many, many, LinkedIn, and many, many others, right? Um, and are part of the community driving this forward, um, uh, you know, making sure that the pr product survives despite of uh, any changes um, uh, of a single individual company deciding to go um, um, uh, further or not. Um, it's a p very powerful high-performance SQL engine, um, uh, proven at scale. So the largest deployments of Presto are you know, approaching about 1,000 machines in a single cluster. And there are many companies are actually running many, many clusters. Uh, because since it's compute only, it's very easy to spin them up and down uh, and give access to certain data sources without sort of uh, creating data silos. Um, um, you know, it's meant to be interactive SQL uh, and, and handle high concurrency of queries. Um, um, as, as I mentioned, fundamental piece of architecture is separation of compute and storage, uh, which means uh, Presto itself doesn't have any favorite storage mechanism, doesn't come with its own mechanism to store the data. It relies on whatever your big data is, whether that's object storage or HDFS, uh, you may keep some of your older data in you know, Oracle, Teradata, and other data warehouses. You can keep some, access some operational data from Postgres or a SQL Server um, or anywhere it lives right now. You don't have to invest in moving data around to start getting into insights, right? Because you can access data where it lives after properly um, mounting the configuration um, settings. Um, 
So with that, uh, we also like to say, you know, it represents a big value as a no vendor locking. First of all, it's an open source project, so you can run it, use it um, without any vendor if you'd like. Um, you, you know, you're free from being tied to any Hadoop distribution. It works across any uh, Hadoop distribution. You can change the storage underneath Presto, and your applications, your end users, will be still interacting uh, with the same data um, without knowing uh, you actually move from you know, HDFS to object storage, for example. Uh, or would, uh, you can move from uh, on-prem deployment to the cloud or the other way around, and, and things for them do not change uh, because Presto is uh, isolating them from that um, uh, entirely. And, and again, you, you're not tied to any specific infrastructure, uh, so you can move between clouds, for example, um, if, if that's your choice. Um, so it provides great uh, insulation, uh, flexibility, optionality in deploying and querying your data. Okay, so Starburst, uh, you know, as I mentioned, we are uh, involved in the Presto community for, for many years already. We have uh, large customers in production, um, both on-premise and in, in various cloud deployments. Uh, uh, with, um, with Kubernetes, we are now en enabling sort of very similar experience across any cloud and on-premise environments, um, like OpenShift, for example, uh, so which, which is really great um, for both customers and us as developers that we don't have to uh, necessarily you know, uh, handle custom um, deployment mechanism for each cloud uh, separately. Um, and as an enterprise vendor, we have uh, things that you get extra in addition to just core open source project. Uh, uh, and, but we contribute heavily to the open source community. In fact, we probably represent um, over 70% of contributions to the project right now. Um, so, as I mentioned, Presto is very, very high performance SQL engine. And it was built like that from the beginning. Uh, so the uh, objective to, uh, for the team that was um, implementing this was uh, make interactive analytics at big scale um, a reality, right? Um, so before Presto, there was Hive, uh, you know, obviously a uh, very highly respected uh, engine that can handle petabytes of data, but interactivity wasn't a strong point of Hive. Um, uh, so with good uh, design um, uh, techniques from sort of uh, textbook, uh, textbooks, uh, recipes for building MPP database, uh, Presto took advantage of pipeline in-memory execution, uh, columnar processing, uh, internally vectorized processing, uh, efficient memory structures and, and, and computes, um, leveraging modern compute engines like multi-core CPUs and multi-threaded architectures. And we've combined with columnar storage under the cover uh, in, form of, in form of ORC Parquet, we are, we are now able to, to deliver really, really nice performance for analytical use cases. Um, and, we, and we then also um, add cost-based optimizer, which now works across many different data sources, and you can arrive at very efficient query plans um, uh, across your uh, data that could be spread out um, in, in, many different, um, uh, in many different places. Um, So in terms of performance, uh, this is just to show off the cost-based optimizer um, uh, improvements we introduced some time ago. Uh, the, the primary goal here was for environments where your data is spread across many different sources and you have many tables being involved in, in, in various queries. Uh, you know, the, the, the decision how to arrange the um, join order in a query was a really fundamental um, uh, win uh, if, if done properly. Um, so this is showing Presto before and after int introduction of cost-based optimizer. Um, and you can see we are, we are um, enjoying benefits um, of an order of magnitude faster performance for, for many queries. Okay, um, so with that, uh, I think hopefully it's very clear how, how Presto works internally, what it's good for, and I will let um, Kyle to discuss how you deploy it in OpenShift platform and how we can enable um, uh, that analytics in, in, the, in the environment. Yeah, so when I was first ex uh, exposed to Presto it was probably a couple of years ago, uh, two, three years ago, um, we were meeting with a number of customers who were in the middle of kind of switching their data processing architecture over to using like on-prem object storage. And uh, you know, that's why I was there, is to help them kind of adjust and, and use Ceph for those needs. Um, and Presto was something that they really liked because they were 
they were breaking up compute and storage, and, and Presto didn't come like with with an opinion as in terms of what what storage would be used with it. And a couple of years ago, um, a lot of these same customers were using Presto and were using the object storage. And what they were, um, you know, they they basically wrote their own deployment tools for deploying these different Presto clusters. And one of the things that are great about uh, uh, being able, you know, having OpenShift is um, alleviating this burden from folks, right? Instead of having to write, um, you know, some, write scripting and some sort of configuration management tools, they can use something like, a, like an operator. And so, you know, and, and having written, you know, Ansible playbooks for Presto, I can, I can appreciate <laughs> not having to do that anymore. Um, so all the things that Kubernetes are good at, you kind of get once you start using the operator framework to deploy uh, clusters uh, and particularly uh, Presto clusters. So instead of having to worry about um, you know provisioning uh, uh, new nodes or dealing with fault tolerance, uh, Kubernetes kind of handles that for you. It can you can say how many workers, how many Presto workers you want online, and it'll bring that many up. If one goes down, then it'll provision a, a new one, and it'll get bound to a different node. Um, you can trivially scale it, right? So I can go in, I can change the number of replicas for workers up, and then you know I have more. Um, and so you could potentially um, make it so that you know if you have a higher query volume that you scale out the cluster to be able to you know keep your, your query responsiveness low. And then if the uh, volume of queries kind of subsides, then you can you know scale it back in. And because it's compute only, there's no um, uh, you, you don't have to worry about it, right? Uh, one of the classical problems with sorts of like database type approaches where you have compute and storage together is scaling in is usually prohibitive because that means you know the, the data is there, so you can't it makes it more complicated. But being compute only makes that a lot easier. So, Presto on OpenShift, um, we it had been been a little while, and so. Uh, I reached out to Camille again, and I said, hey, you know, I, I see that you guys are doing some work with Kubernetes, and, and I think it would be great if, if Starburst had uh, an operator inside of OpenShift um, so that people could really easily provision Presto clusters and, uh, for, to process their data. So we kind of connected the dots, and um, they, made it, uh, they made it happen with a little bit of help. Um, but mostly them. They had, it was like 90% done by the time we started having the conversation with them. Um, so what the operator does is it deploys the cord, uh, deploys coordinator and worker um, that, that would then work together. So you submit the queries to the coordinator. Coordinary comes up with the coordinator comes up with the query plan, and then distributes the tasks to the workers, which then will source data, process it, filter it, and then you know do any sort of other more complex type operations, and then uh, return it back up. And um, they also have bundled in a Hive Metastore service so that you can basically catalog your schema there. And if you, you know, want to improve the query plans, you can you know, analyze the tables. And then uh, the subsequent results of that analysis will be stored in the Metastore so that uh, future queries that interact with those tables will be done uh, more efficiently. So at this point, um, this is a screenshot from uh, one of my OpenShift 4.2 clusters. If you go into the, the catalog under the big data section, there's the Presto operator, uh, operator. So it's under the OLM. And you can click and install. And um, you know, so then you can submit CRs and uh, affect a, a Presto cluster for your environment and begin to experiment with it. So where does, where does Ceph come in? Well, I, I had a little lightning talk earlier about the scalability of Ceph. But uh, Ceph and Presto actually work really great together um, because it's just an object store, and Presto is just a compute engine. So there's not really you know, op opinions around um, using a particular storage or using a particular query engine because it's not a verticalized stack. Um, and originally, you know, I was learned about Presto by way of customers, right? So we had, we had a number of customers that were deploying very large Ceph-based object stores, and were using Presto to process that data for reporting and so on and so forth. 
And the things that um, Ceph provides, like erasure coding, really are great for dealing with high amounts, like many petabytes of data, also open source. And then kind of the, the requisite plug, right? So in an in a OpenShift, in open shift environment, we have OpenShift container storage, which is the, the, the packaging of, of Ceph with an operator that can manage Ceph, which is called Rook Ceph. And then additionally, there's another component called Nuba, which is uh, kind of a, a multi-cloud gateway that can, you know, you can have multiple different object stores on-prem or public cloud, and it can kind of route and have sophisticated policy around where, where data should be placed. So how do you use Ceph plus Presto? Well, there's a connector. So Presto has this idea of different connectors, and there's different connectors for connecting to different data sources. So if you are connecting to you know, Postgres, you might use a Postgres connector. If you're connecting to, um, in this case, if you're connecting to uh, S3 compatible object store, you would use the Hive connector. Um, and then you reference your, your meta store where it's going to retrieve schema that's going to have information about what, what buckets and what, what prefixes within those buckets map to uh, particular databases and tables. And then this is also where you would configure your credential information and an endpoint if you were not using like Amazon S3 proper and instead were using an on-premise object store. And so you don't really know, like if I'm, a, if, if I'm just a data scientist and I'm interacting with the data, I don't really know necessarily if, if the tables have already been created and I'm just doing SQL queries, I don't really know where the data is coming from, and that's one of the nice things about Presto, right? They can have a multiple, you can have multiple different data sources, you can have some relational databases, you could have an object store, you could have some older data that's in HDFS, and as from the data scientist's perspective, it doesn't, they don't know that it's being sourced from one, one place or another place. And so this is kind of nice. Um, if you wanted to create tables, that map to object store, you know, it's, it's as simple as running a few statements, and then you provide uh, basically an external location, right? So uh, the path, you would give it like a S3, and then the bucket, and then some path in there, and um, then that maps that particular table, and the partitions within that table, and then, you know, the parquet or ORC files that, that compose that, those tables um, to there, so that when the workers go to source data, Right, if they have a, a query that you know is going to pull in, you know, by date range, right, and you've partitioned your tables by date, then it'll read all the files that are in, um, like it'll it'll filter the path, right? So it'll query for the list of all the objects that are in the bucket with this particular prefix that match, you know, based on the time range, and then it'll read in all those files, and then you know, Parquet has metadata and so on and so forth, and so it'll bring all that in. And the person writing the SQL has no idea, doesn't need to know all of the intricacies around accessing the data in an object store. It's all being handled for you by the Hive connector and by Presto, and it's kind of abstracted away by this, this idea of the schema.